<clears throat> it's everyone's favorite time of the year, Star Wars week. The time special that special time when nerd fandom comes together and unanimously agrees on everything. We can at least agree that The Last Jedi screwed up a bunch of stuff in Star Wars movie lore, right? I mean, I know JJ screwed up a bunch of stuff too. He even buried Anakin's lightsaber in the sand. But he did his best to at least fix the things The Last Jedi royally fucked up. So let's start running through it because we got a lot to cover. Oh, hang on. Spoiler alert! Number one, light speed skipping. In the Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson thought it was genius to have the First Order be able to track through hyperspace. With exactly zero explanation, we were given the ultimate Star Wars chase scene. JJ works around this by giving Poe a buff. Damn, the thrilling world of light speed tracking can't be used on Poe. How sad. Number two, Rey has no training, so why is she so OP? A lot of complaints about the power of Rey. She beat Kylo in a straight up fight and lifted all those rocks. A lot of people were pissed and claimed she wasn't trained. Well, can't bitch about that anymore because Rey was trained for years by Leia in the rise of Skywalker. And who trained Leia? Well, Luke did. And Luke's training, she, he trained Leia. Number three, Rose, stay in the house. In The Last Jedi, we got Rose explaining to Finn what war does to people. Rose, this guy was literally a stormtrooper against his will. He doesn't need you to explain the effect that war profiteering has on people's lives. And for some reason, Finn doesn't speak up. It's almost like he forgot he was a stormtrooper too. But in this movie, they switch the relationship back to somewhere where it makes sense. She says, I'm staying behind in case we have to have a chance to stop the fleet if you find it. And Finn looks at her and he's like, if? as to imply she needs to be more optimistic. And then he tells her to stay behind because none of her toys sold and they're gonna introduce a new character that's actually likable. Number four, Kylo Ren is now stronger than Rey. The only reason Kylo Ren lost to Rey in The Force Awakens is because he got a blaster to the stomach. But then Ryan Johnson made him a weak little man that couldn't beat her in a straight up force duel. He loses so bad he has to take a nap, but not this time. Kylo wins their duel in a straight up fight and for the first time we see the true power of Kylo Ren. This was JJ's way of saying, hey, Ben Solo is actually stronger here. Does anyone care? I mean, I cared a little bit. Beer helped. Number five, Rey's a Palpatine. For some reason, everyone loved that Rey was a nobody. I don't know why that's cool to everyone. Did you guys see The Force Awakens? They put a shitload of emphasis on what her story was. Where she was from and who she was was super important in that movie. My family, they'll be back. The two were accompanied by a girl. What girl? Who's the girl? Quiet girl. It's like a Chekhov's gun situation. You can't spend a whole movie hinting that where she's from is super cool and interesting and then just be like Ryan Johnson and say, Nah, none of that matters. Aren't I a genius? We deserved an answer to this thread. So JJ did the best he could and made it related to Palpatine. I don't think that was the original idea he had, but it was the best he could come up with considering the dumpster fire that Ryan Johnson left him. A lot of people are complaining that Palpatine had a child and saying that it's a plot hole. People just don't understand how the Emperor could have a son. I guess I have to be the one to break it to you guys, but people have sex. I know that may be a little sickening and devastating, but yeah, there are probably a few people in the world having sex at this very moment. God damn, only Star Wars fans would say people getting laid is a plot hole. Jesus Christ. Number six, they fixed Maz Kanata. Maz Kanata does not talk about alien sex at all in this movie. Yeah, I mean, I take that as a win. Number seven, how to mourn a hero. When someone dies in a movie, it's not usually the death that makes us sad, it's their friends' reactions to that death that carries the weight and implications in the narrative. This is not how you handle a death. Luke is gone. I felt it. But it wasn't sadness or pain, it was peace. I, I, am, am I supposed to be sad? It seems like I'm supposed to be happy. This is how you properly mourn a hero's death. She's gone. Number eight, JJ tells Ryan to stop shitting on the timeless classics. All right, this is not how you treat the films that came before yours that gave you your fucking job. 
It's time to let old things die. Skywalker, the Sith, the Jedi, the Rebels, let it all die. Kill it if you have to. JJ said, nah, fuck that. We need to pay respect to the original trilogies. And he gives us this line. Number nine, Luke respects his father's lightsaber again. Everyone knows what happened in The Last Jedi. In fact, I talked about it extensively in my last video. Unfortunately, JJ can't bring Luke back from the dead, but can he at least take shots at Ryan Johnson's treatment of him? The Jedi's weapon deserves more respect. I'm never leaving this place. I'm doing what you did. I was wrong. Do I think this Luke stuff was kind of cheesy? Yeah, of course I do. You'll take both sabers to Exeter but Ryan burned any opportunity to actually use Luke in an interesting way to the ground. Unless you count contemplating child murder and then being a lazy bum interesting. So the best JJ could do was give him the Alec Guinness treatment. Number 10, Chewie doesn't work for Uber anymore. Another issue I talked about in my last video is that Chewie's just been a chauffeur in this series. But in The Rise of Skywalker, Chewie is part of the gang and he's treated with the respect that that lovable Wookiee deserves. They even give him a fucking medal. I mean, if Star Wars fans are complaining about that, I am so confused because him not getting a medal in A New Hope is one of the first Star Wars complaints to ever surface on the internet. It's like they literally reference and fix the most complained Star Wars comment of all time besides Han shot first, and now people are complaining that it was fixed. Number 11, no more holdo maneuvers. Allow me to explain how fucking dumb this is. Lightspeed travel is supposed to be jumping into another dimension and then traveling through that dimension and then coming back out into your dimension or something like that. I don't fucking remember. But because of this dumbass stunt, Ryan Johnson made lightspeed travel just moving really, really fast. We need to go some holdo maneuvers. Do some real damage. Come on, that move is one in a million. Thank God Finn shoots that one down so quickly. And most importantly, the way they attacked the Death Star in the original trilogy finally makes sense again. Ryan Johnson literally fucked up A New Hope with that idea. So JJ was like, no, you're not going to fuck up A New Hope. I'm, I'm going to fix that. Number 12, where the fuck did Snoke come from if Rebels won in Return of the Jedi? Johnson thought he had a great idea for how to deal with Snoke. In fact, he took to Twitter to troll everyone that his Snoke idea was something no one else could think of. Ultimately, it turned out his idea was that he literally had no idea. Some people think that this is genius for some reason. I guess admitting that you don't have any ideas is brave and people love it. But for those of us that actually wanted an explanation for how he came to power, well... Palpatine's behind it all. All right, let's move on. We got a lot to fix and Disney gave Star Wars 30 minutes less than Marvel in the runtime for the finale. Number 13, Finn is force sensitive because that was established in The Force Awakens. You think Finn fought Kylo with nothing but his stormtrooper training? JJ even hinted he was force sensitive in this scene when he hears the screams of people dying. I felt a great disturbance in the force, as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. I feel something terrible has happened. And one of the biggest complaints that I see about this movie is that Rey is no longer a no one and that that was so much more interesting. You guys, he just took that storyline and he transferred it to Finn, who was originally supposed to have that storyline. If you want to talk about coming from nothing and it being interesting, it's actually way more interesting coming from Finn. Stormtroopers are the most disposable bad guys in fiction. I've seen hundreds of them blown up, shot, or sabered, and I've never cared one bit. They have no place in these stories. They are disposable background bad guys that everyone shits on. But for one of them to finally take their helmet off and say, I refuse to be part of this anymore and follow the force into the middle of a galactic war between good and evil, that's a lot more interesting than taking Rey, giving her part of Vader's theme, implying she has a super relevant background and then just completely abandoning the story thread because you want to subvert expectations. Number 14, Anakin Skywalker was still the chosen one. At the end of the movie, Anakin Skywalker tells Rey, bring back the balance as I did. For the people complaining that Anakin wasn't the chosen one anymore because of this movie, I mean, I don't fucking know what to tell you. 
Ben Solo was never supposed to be the big bad villain that Ryan made him become. His arc was always that he was going to be redeemed, so they need to bring in another villain. And who else but... Go for Papa Palpatine! So since they brought him back, they made him severely fucked up, and then he even admits that he was defeated before. And then they paid Hayden Christensen to come on and do a voiceover and tell everyone that his sacrifice still mattered and that he still brought balance to the Force. I don't fucking know, man. I might need to do another video about this part, about how Anakin Skywalker is still the chosen one. Right after I go get a Limerita. Goddamn Star Wars week always makes me drink. See you next time, cleanup crew. <laughs>